I'm going to open a page here and talk about color palette and the use of the color CMYK. Now, let's review this. I've got my palette set up here in the perfect page with the Pathfinder transparency and layers and one palette character, paragraph stroke in the other palette, color swatches and gradient in the, in the third. Tool set up with uh, a tear out of the additional shapes we can make. The two extra arrow, white arrow, black, white, white arrow, white arrow with a plus, and the rotate and reflex tool. I get a new page, I go file and new. And it asked me information here whether I want to name it and uh, the format. I'm going to go with 8.5 by 11 and just hit OK. And I get uh, a page. Command R puts the uh, ruler in place. Command negative brings it down just a step so I can see it better. And remember, we grab this little square here, click and drag, and hold the cross line so that it realigns itself to go from uh, 0 out to 8.5 and, and from 0 down to 11 here. And then I always put a halfway line at the uh, guideline at uh, 4 and a quarter so I always know where half of the page is. Remember my Illustrator preferences. I've set my guides and grids to be the uh, light gray of the colors. I think it's cyan when it starts. Light gray. And they have two choices, dots and lines. We start defaults at, at uh, lines and I go to dots. And so when I OK that, I get gray dotted lines here for my guidelines. All right. now. The color palette. Let me pull this up here so you can see it better. It has three color units in it, the three different palettes within this palette. The color, the swatches, and the gradient. The gradient uh, will cover in a, in a separate movie, but I just want you to see that the colors here together. Now, with the color, you get, um, you see we got the white fill and the black stroke. I can go down here and make the Let's bring the stroke forward and make it nothing. And then bring the fill forward and and uh, in the swatches I'll just pick a, a orange red here. And so that's why I want to paying attention to what's in the stroke and the fill. We're going to use shapes here, so I, I don't want to see strokes as much as I do want to see fill. This is a rainbow bar across the bottom. It's just a quick pick. If uh, I draw a rectangle here, and it's, it's lit up because I, I select it, and it has the uh, uh, bounding boxes showing. Now, uh, if you don't want the bounding box, you can come down here and view and say hide bounding box. And then when you select it, the bounding box won't show. The, the activated anchor points will show, but the bounding box won't. And the bounding box has a white hollow anchor point here and here and, and on the, all the corners and on the sides so that you can maneuver that. It's best to have the show bounding box on so that you, you can see that. And then, of course, you can grab the bounding box and realign this thing if you need to so to, your, uh, to your desire. Now a rectangle moves if it's an odd shape, and then, then it would still have some things to do with uh, that bounding box being important. Now, if I change the colors here on the rainbow bar, you see I can go into the lighter colors at the top and the darker colors in the bottom. And if I, I go through the cool reds and the warm reds and the blues and the greens, that's just a quick fix sort of thing to get that to uh, find the color you want. Just, you know, haphazardly find it. If you want a lime green, you can kind of go there, but you might want to build your lime green more. But that's what the rainbow bar is for. And it does have a no color on this end, and it has a white. You can't see white on white very well, but it has a black, too. Now notice when the black is on, let's look at these slider bars. This is very important for the use of color in uh, Illustrator. CMYK, that's printer talk. People who run printing presses, when they print in color, they only have four ink colors they use on a CMYK production for color process. C stands for cyan. That's uh, a blue. 
and uh, well here I'll show you here's a hundred percent cyan and no percent black look see here the percentages here that's a hundred percent there's fifty percent there's you know eighteen percent so we deal in percentages when we talk about these colors there's a hundred percent cyan so it's a, a medium blue magenta see I slide it down to hundred percent no percent is white magenta is a very cool red a reddish color now red is a name and we're gonna start talking about hues and values and that sort of thing but uh, that's magenta now I take out the magenta and throw in now uh, Y for yellow and there's 100% yellow and um, K is for black now not B because B could be blue it could be brown it could be bunting I don't know but it's it's uh, K is for black so CMYK stands for the four colors that printers use now of course when they print color they use a series of dots small dots middle dots large dots close together dots far away dots if the dots are far away and they're yellow it's going to be a very light yellow because the white paper is going to affect what your eyes are seeing if you put yellow dots and red dots very close together you're going to get orange if you put blue dots and green dots together you're going to get uh, get blue and yellow dots you're gonna get green so these are the pure percentage colors now notice I have a hundred percent yellow here what if I put a hundred percent magenta with it see it turns into a very warm red if I back off to 50 percent of the red it's it's um, it's an orange if I add a little blue to it it's getting to be a dirty brown if I add some black to it, it's a darker shade. Now notice that uh, all the red and yellow together gives you uh, that orange red. Add a little black and it starts to turn into mar maroon. Add a lot of black and it's getting into a reddish brown. Add more black and it's a really dark brown. Add all the black and you've got black. So that's what we talk about in percentages of these colors, and the CMYK. And you can... Uh, it's like mixing paint with the uh, oil paints or acrylics. You've got pigments in a medium, and they mix together, and your eye can't see the difference between yellow and uh, red. And what actually what it sees is orange. In le electronic colors that we're talking about here with the computer, then we can do these percentages. So if I wanted to send a print job to uh, Timbuktu, and I wanted that color blue, I would tell Timbuktu I'm looking for 88.63% of cyan. 78.04% of magenta, no percent yellow, no percent black, and I would, for the most part, get that color. So, um, next time you talk to a printer, just say CMYK, and he'll smile at you, because he knows you're talking some of his language. Now, swatches. Swatches are pre-made colors that come with a computer. There's black, there's red, there's yellow, there's a green, there's a blue, there's another darker blue, and yada, 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 until you go all the way through here. Maybe you get a brown, you get the darkest brown, you say, that's not quite dark enough. So you go back to your color and throw a little more black into it, and it gets a pretty dark brown. Let's say you wanted the navy blue, and I, I chose that color, not dark enough. Go back to the color and throw a little more black into it, and it gets pretty dark blue. So these are preset. There's some other colors down in here that I'm not going to worry about right now. There, there's some gradients and there's some other things that are there. Uh, when we talk about gradients, you'll, you can see how you can make these things up. These are some preset stuff that uh, it's there and you can open them up and play with them. But um, get used to making your own colors and your own color decisions. These are some gray values that uh, you might be using if you're doing black and white uh, images. But again, it's, it's there for very specialized purposes, and we don't need to cover all of that. This is a little bucket if you want to save this. I made this navy blue right here. What if I wanted to save it in here? I just hit that button, and I can actually give it a name. Right now, it's got this, the, the, uh, the stuff there. I'll just put navy. And, well, navy blue. To, I'm sure I'll remember what navy means. And um, okay that. And look what happens. It put that color right here in a white box, and it gives it a name, navy blue. <clears throat> now, the white box means it's a custom color that didn't come originally. 
if I save this file, save as, and give it a title, let's just call it uh, color palette. What's a P-A-L-E-T-T-E, okay. And um, I'm gonna save that to the desktop. Let's say, just there it goes. Color palette, desktop, and it's Adobe Illustrator. Save it. Okay, and okay that. Every time I open color palette, that color, this document, that color will show up. Now, what that means is if you have a client that has a blue, particular blue and particular yellow, and you find those two blues and yellows, uh, those two colors, and you put them in this uh, project, save that as a master page for that client's account. And every time you want those two colors, open that page, and then erase what's there and put your new thing on it, and save it again, but that goes back into your client file, and those colors are saved. So that's what the swatches are for. And if you want to take that color and get rid of it, just click it to this little trash can. Not to the trash can down here at the bottom, but to that trash can, and it will take color out. And you'll, you'll maneuver colors. You'll add, and you'll subtract, and you'll change your mind or whatever. And so some you'll stay, some will go. And you'll have that to work with. Now, uh, keep in mind that everything that you're going to make, if I take a circle here and make a, a circle shape, and I make it a red circle, now, obviously, that's on a different layer because it's in front. If I want to put it behind, command, shift, left bracket. Try to do that with one hand with three fingers. It goes behind all the way to the back. Now, there's only two layers. Actually, there's three. This guideline is on a layer, but it's not in effect because it's locked. Remember to always go and see your guides here and make sure they're check marked there that they're locked. Unless you want to move them, then come here and select that, it will uncheck it. You can move your guide and then be sure to come back and check it again. If you hit your right arrow, you can see that shows up with a check mark by the lock guides. And you want that so that they don't move around on you. So bring it forward, command shift, right bracket. Brings it forward, command shift, left bracket, puts it all the way back. Let's bring in another shape just so we have uh, something else to look at and make that uh, green okay it's in front because it's the last thing i made command shift left bracket takes it all the way back if you want to move one frame at a time command don't hit the shift key command right bracket brings it forward one place and it comes in front of the red but behind the blue but most of the time your command shift right bracket all the way to the front or command shift left bracket all the way to the rear and that's just a a way of uh, speeding up moving your shapes around but command right bracket brings it one step now there might be 14 or 15 or 13 uh, different layers and that's something you'll figure out later on but it's a, a way of moving things back and forth so if I want a particular color and layer or, or I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna try and find it try to create it and make it work in my behalf on whatever project I'm working on and if I like the color I've made, or if I make a special new color, let's say that green, that I'll make it uh, add a little more yellow to it. Well, it's 100% yellow now. Let's add some more uh, red to it, and it gets it a little darker. If I like that color and I want to save that, remember I hit this button right here. Well, while that's chosen and selected, I hit that button, and I'll give it a name, dark green, DK green. You don't always have to name them, but I'm doing it now just to show you that it's Good idea, and there's DK Green and Navy Blue. And so, if I say File, Save As, it'll save everything that I did from the last time to this point in time, because I've added some shapes and colors and stuff, and it's called Color Palette, and I hit Save, and Replace, because it's replacing what was there before. Remember, I only had one color, now I have two custom colors, and OK, that is an Illustrator CS4, and there we are. So that's the uh, looking at the color palettes and the CMYK that we use in uh, Illustrator.